Hi, I'm Andrew, and I will shortly discuss the main ideas of this paper Gang Prior Embedded Network for Blind Face Restoration in the Wild. This discussion will contribute to our survey paper Deep Face Generation and Editing. If you would like to learn more about this topic and our survey paper, check the links in the description and visit our GitHub repository. Imagine we have the following problem. We have a low resolution or blurred face, like in this example, and we want to generate high resolution details of that face. So, simply put, the first main idea of this approach is to take a style gunk like architecture and generate an expected high resolution image. The technical problem of this idea is to find the 512 dimensional W vector which is the input of the style gun architecture that will produce relevant high-resolution image. Basically, this work demonstrates that it is not the optimal solution to train such an encoder that takes as an input the low-resolution image and produces the vector W. Better results can be achieved if we take activations of the encoder layers and share these activations with the corresponding layers of the style gang generator, which resembles the UNET approach. In the paper in figure 4, we can see the low quality input and corresponding high resolution ground truth image that was used to create the low quality image. Then examples B and C demonstrate style gang generated images from the predicted vector W when we don't share activations of the encoder layers with the style gang generator. And examples D and E demonstrate results when activation of the encoder layers are shared with the style gang generator. Now let's take a look at the figure 3 to understand how can we technically share the activation of the encoder layers with the style gang generator. So first of all, we need to train a modified version of StyleGang from scratch in a normal way. However, there is a small trick which is crucial for integrating the skip connections from encoder to the StyleGang generator layers. For example, let's take a closer look at one of the modified StyleGang layers. So first, it consists of, for example, 512 channels with a certain number of pixels. And here we concatenate them with another, for example, 512 channels, which have only noise information. And later, next convolutional layers of the generator takes this 1024 channels as an input. While training this style gun architecture, these noise channels do not contain any useful information and therefore play a role of a placeholder. And later, in the fine-tuning phase, these placeholder noise channels copy activations from the encoder layers and thus allow to fine-tune the style gun generator results based on the activation of the encoder layers. Another idea of integration of information explored in this work was element-wise addition of pixel activations of corresponding layers of encoder and generator. This idea, as we can see from these examples, produces quite similar results as in the concatenation case. In case D, an element-wise addition was used instead of concatenation, and in case E, concatenation of channels was used. Here case E looks a bit more sharper, although perceptually the case D with element-wise addition probably looks a bit more similar to the ground truth image. To conclude, this additional encoder prior provided to this generator produces perceptually better results than cases B and C without such prior. So in case C without noise, there are no skip connections between encoder and generator. And in case B, such skip connections exist, but the generator weights are frozen and they are not fine-tuned after the first phase of style gang training. Namely, in the first phase, the style gang generator learns that these skip connection channels contain only noise information, and therefore these noise channels shouldn't influence the output result of the generator. But if the style gang generator continue training after these noise channels start to receive useful information from the encoder layer activations, this second phase of fine tuning of the style gang generator weights allows to obtain results like in cases D and E. Next technical detail is how to train the encoder. 
So presumably, after this style gunk model training is over, we can generate thousands of pairs of random input vectors and output high-resolution images. Then we downgrade the high-resolution images into low-quality images. And now we can use pairs of corresponding low-quality images and vector Ws to train the encoder using a supervised learning approach. Here in Figure 5, authors compare phase restoration results using different approaches. The current GPAN approach is shown in column H, and other approaches are shown in columns from B to G. As a side note, let's compare these results to a minimal convolutional neural network example. Here you can see the blurring results of a different study with a naive convolutional neural network architecture and supervised learning. For example, here we used only three convolutional layers to train the network. The architecture of the network is shown in the following notebook. So, as you can see here, just three convolutional layers with kernel size 9, 1 and 5, and number of channels 64, 32 and 3, we can achieve these deblurring results. A possible limitation of this approach is that we need to have a generator that can produce expected images. Namely, if a style gunk or any other generator architecture cannot produce expected images, then fine-tuning of the generator with encoder priors probably will not improve results. To conclude, the obtained results in this work are quite impressive, and this approach highlights an interesting idea of combining an encoder and style gunk generator using skip connections like in a UNET or hourglass models. And later in the fine tuning phase, these placeholder noise channels copy activations from the encoder layers and thus allow to fine tune the style gun generator results based on the activation of the encoder layers. Important to notice, these UNET-like skip connections can be implemented either as concatenation of copy of the encoder channels or as addition of encoder channel activations with generated channel activations. And as we can estimate from these pictures D and E, these two approaches, concatenation or addition, demonstrate pretty similar results. A pre-trained model of this approach is available here. So let's check the phase restoration performance on a few images from Internet. Here I found three original high-resolution images of faces, and height of each face is approximately equal to 500 pixels. Then I resized images such that height of a face is equal to 50 pixels. Then I upscaled these low-resolution images, so they became blurry. And now let's feed this blurry image into the architecture. So now let's compare the results. This is a low-quality image with the original face height 50 pixels. This is GPAN restoration result with the height of the face 500 pixels. And this is the original image with the height of the face 500 pixels. The same here, 50 pixels height of the face, GPAN result and the original image. 50 pixels height of the face, GPAN result and the original image. Without prior knowledge about the identity of the face, this restoration result looks pretty good. Although with prior knowledge about the identity of the face, the perceptual difference exists. Let's conduct the following experiment. We process a low-resolution input image, save the result of face restoration, 
and feed it as an input into the network again. We can repeat this iterative process several times until the output image converges to a stable face representation, which looks like a cartoon image. After six recursive iterations, we get the following result. This short overview of the paper Gang Prior Embedded Network for Blind Face Restoration in the Wild is a part of our survey paper Deep Face Generation and Editing. If you would like to know more about this topic in our survey paper, check the link in the description and visit our GitHub repository.